In this video, we're going to start to take a look at navigation menus. And we're going to start out with vertical menus, and then in a few videos, we'll take a look at horizontal menus. So we've got our UL element, our LI element, and our anchor element. And so if you look over here at the web page, this is the default look without any styling. We haven't put any rules in yet, and so this is the default that you would get in the browser. And this is basically what an unordered list does. You'll get these bullets. The unordered list is a block level element, so that's why this is in the top-down order. And of course, the anchor is our actual link, and so that comprises the entire area for the link that we can click on, and that, of course, is the hand, as I said. Now, most of the action will take place with our link. That's what we're going to be formatting. So we're going to put most of our CSS rules in this area. But we do need to do some initial things against the unordered list. So let's just go ahead and copy and paste here. And now we've got our unordered list selector. Now, the first thing we want to do is get rid of these bullets. So in order to do that, we use the list style property. And we set that to none. So let's refresh. And there you can see now the bullets for the unordered list are gone. Now the next step, and by the way, this is a very common practice that you'll see web developers do, they will get rid of the padding and the margin for the unordered list because we want to control that down at the anchor tag level, not at the UL level. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna set the padding to zero, margin to zero. We'll hit refresh. And there you can see all the padding and margins are gone because, again, we want to control this down at the anchor tag level. And remember, the anchor tag is within the LI element, and the LI element is within our unordered list. So let's create our CSS rules for our anchor tag. Now this is the path again, the UL to the LI to the anchor tag. Now you don't actually have to put these in here. We could actually just specify A for the anchor tag, but it's good practice to put the path in so that you kind of know the path when you see the CSS rule. So, okay, the next thing we want to do is get rid of the underline for our links. So let's go ahead and do that. And the property we use there is text hyphen decoration. We set that to none. So we'll go ahead and refresh our web page, And there you can see now the underlining is gone. Now what we want to do is set a font for our links because you usually don't want to use the browser's default. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I like to use Georgia, but you can experiment with the fonts that you like. You could use Helvetica, you could use Arial, and you will remember that the browser will try to load this font first, and then if it can't load it, it will load the second one and on and on. So let's go ahead and refresh. And there you can see now we have our Georgia font. But now for our menu, we want to have a nice background color. So let's go ahead and create that. And of course, we use the background color property. I'm going to use a hex code here. So it's going to be 5C755E. So that's what we're going to use. But you can pick whatever color you want. And you can see that's a nice green. Now that text doesn't stand out so well against the green. So let's actually switch the color from purple to white. And we do that, of course, with the color property. And if we refresh here, we can see that looks much better. Now you'll notice that the background color green is only sizing itself to the area of the text or the link. And that is because the anchor tag is an inline element. Remember the difference between a block element and an inline element? Remember we talked about that? Well, you will remember it's not in the flow. So this background color will only stretch to the size of the text. So we have to convert our anchor tag to a block level element so that our background color will stretch out further than the text. So let's go ahead and do that. And you will remember that we use the display property. And now we're going to go ahead and convert that to a block. And if we refresh this, now the background color stretches all the way to the end of the page because it's in the flow. But obviously we don't want our menu stretching all the way to the end of the page. So let's shorten this up a bit and we'll enforce a width. And we'll make the width 80 pixels. Now you can make that whatever is appropriate for your website, but we're just going to use 80 pixels here. But again, this isn't the standard or anything like that. You can size it to whatever you want your menus to look like. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll refresh. There you can see that looks much better. But now we want these links to look more like buttons. And also, uh, it's kind of hard to tell if you notice which button is different from the other one. So let's put some margin between all of our anchor elements. And so we'll set the margin to 5 pixels. And you'll see now we'll get some space between our anchor elements. And there you can see these look more like buttons. Now you'll notice how the 
text is crunched up right against the border. And so let's put some space between the text and the border. And you will remember that CSS box model, what's in between the content, in this case the text, and the border, it's padding. So let's stick some padding in there and we'll make it 10 pixels. Now you'll notice that when we refresh this page, this will actually increase the size of our buttons in our menu. So just be aware of that. And you can see now it's much bigger because we've added 10 pixels all the way around our content. Now let's add a border around our links. Now if you don't want a border, you don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna show you how to do that. And we've done that in previous videos, but let's go ahead and add a border. We're gonna make it one pixel. We're gonna make it solid. We're gonna make the color red and we're gonna curve the corners of our button. So let's go ahead and save that. And there you can see now we have that nice little border around the button. Now some people like the text sort of closer to the left side of the button. Other people want it centered. So again, that is preference, but I'll show you how to center that. And we use the text align property and we just set it to center. If we hit refresh, there you can see now we've got our text centered. Now you'll notice so far we only set a width. We didn't put a height in our links here. So we're actually letting the browser determine the height. So you can do that or you can actually set a fixed height. So let's set a fixed height and we'll save this. We'll refresh this. There you can see we've increased the size of our buttons. Now you'll notice though that the text now are no longer vertically centered. And that's because we specified an absolute height. The browser no longer will vertically align these for us. So we have to use a property to do that. And the property we use is called the line height property. Now we want to set this to 25 pixels. In other words, we want to match the height. And what this does is it'll actually split this in half. So it'll put 12.5 pixels on the top and it'll take 12.5 pixels and put it on the bottom. And then it will be perfectly centered to the size of our link, which is 25 pixels. So again, to perfectly vertically center this, you want the line height to match the height. And so let's see how that works. And we'll hit refresh. And there you can see they're vertically aligned perfectly now. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. Now I want you to save this code because in the next video, we're gonna add some effects to these buttons. See you guys then.